Hey y'all, it's your favorite red-headed connection counselor ready to tell you all about a CCP that is completely unique to Glencoe High School. Are you ready for it? Today, we are going to be talking about manufacturing and design technology, also known as welding. So let's get started. Now, many of you might be wondering, what is welding? That would be an excellent question. Welding is the process of joining together pieces of material, usually metal, with heat, pressure, or both. That means that you're using high heat and high pressure to make things stick together. Welding is needed to do all sorts of things. So anything from cars, to furniture, to skyscrapers, to beautiful metal artwork, all requires welding as part of the manufacturing or building process. So that means if you like math, STEM, or art, manufacturing and design technology could be the CCP for you. So like I said, welding is required in all sorts of industries for all sorts of reasons. Some careers that benefit from the skills you'll learn in the manufacturing and design technology CCP include being a welder, so someone whose career is just specialized in welding or a machinist. These are tradespeople who can both build and operate giant machinery in factories or other manufacturing centers. An electrician is another example, a construction manager, an engineer, a sheet metal worker, that's someone who's responsible for any big pieces of metal that are used in construction, or a plumber. So you'll gain a lot of both specific and transferable skills in the manufacturing and design technology CCP. The CCP has a big name, but it's also big fun. That said, because the welding workshop is a place where there are huge safety considerations, because there's going to be a lot of big pieces of equipment, really hot things, all that, uh, there are really important characteristics that a student has to have to be successful in the CCP. The first one is self-efficacy. This means that you believe in your own ability to be successful. When you're using potentially dangerous equipment, it's really important that you feel confident that you're going to be able to use that equipment successfully, right? The next important character trait is perspective taking. So a lot of the time, someone in the manufacturing and design tech field is going to be making something for a client. So people are going to hire you to do specific work for them. So it's important that you're able to understand what they need. On another note, you're going to have to be organized. In any profession, but especially one where you're doing projects on heavy duty equipment, you're going to have to make sure that you have a system in place to keep yourself organized. And similarly, communication is key, especially when you're in a place when there are so many safety things to keep in mind. Now, I know I'm talking about safety a lot, so I don't want this to scare anyone out of being part of this CCP. You can absolutely be safe in the welding shop if you're doing all the right things. But because there are lots of ways to end up hurt if you're goofing around, you have to make sure that you're super serious about following the safety rules. Again, you can totally be safe in the shop, but you have to follow all the rules. Okay, finally, an important character trait for students in this CCP is the ability to be a good problem solver. So a welder is someone who's building things, something that involves cre creatively figuring out how to best build that thing, right? So, what do you think? Are you up for taking some of these classes? If so, stay tuned for what the Manufacturing and Design Tech CCP looks like at Glencoe. So first, let's start by talking about some of the things that you'll learn in this CCP, starting with how to work safely with the machines and tools in the metal shop. I don't even know what all these magical machines are called, but our metal shop is huge and you're going to learn how to use everything in there, which is really cool. You're also going to learn to read and interpret mechanical shop drawings and you'll know how to use shop math. Think of this like learning a new language. It's kind of like the secret code of welding and you're going to learn how to decipher it. You're also going to perform advanced machine tool operations. This means that you're going to get pretty good at using and understanding the machines. Similarly, you're going to be able to use CNC and CAM software proficiently. But this is the computer software that pairs up with the actual welding that you're going to do. 
It's what you use to both read and design shop drawings and all that jazz. Finally, you are going to know how to do some advanced shop processes with different metals. So since different metals need different levels of heat and different levels of pressure to make them move or stick together, there are different techniques that you use with each kind of metal. And you will learn a whole array. It's super cool. Now, I totally know what you're thinking. You're thinking, put me in Mrs. Wagner, hold your horses. Let me tell you what classes you need to take. So this CCP is pretty straightforward. As a ninth or 10th grader, you'll take machine welding one. After that, you'll take machine welding two. And then finally, as a senior, you'll take machine welding three, where you'll do your senior project. Easy as that. And if you're interested in this kind of thing, so building or working with your hands or learning how to use machinery and tools, then there are other classes at Glencoe that you might be interested in as well. For instance, you might be interested in construction or woodworking classes so that you can do some more building. Or you might be interested in drafting where you learn to make the plans, maps, and blueprints for things using computer software. It's kind of like the CNC and CAM stuff we were talking about earlier. Blanco has all sorts of fun things if you're interested in this kind of field. But now let's talk about after high school. What educational pathways are out there for you? Since many of the careers that follow welding are trades, you can get into these careers through apprenticeships and on the job training or trade school. This is true for careers like being a sheet metal worker, being an electrician, a mechanic, a machine technician, that's someone who fixes machines, an iron worker, a plumber, lots of different professions in the construction industry. Think about carpentry and masonry, which is like bricks, stone worker, and of course, welding. So this means that you can go straight into work after high school to learn on the job, do some training while you're working, and learn from a tradesperson who has been in the industry. Pretty neat. Now, a lot of the time, apprenticeships can be tied to an associate's degree at a community college, which means that while you're out working and learning from people on the job, you're also taking some classes at a community college to earn your two-year associate's degree. Now, if you want to go on to take on more leadership roles in construction sites, for instance, or if you're thinking that you'd like to be a manufacturing or mechanical engineer, maybe, then you would have to earn a bachelor's degree at a four-year university to get into those careers. But of course, you can always do even more school if that's what tickles your fancy. But now let's look at some of the local colleges that have programs that you might be interested in. So at Portland Community College, you could get your associates in construction trades, and you could also go through their electrician or machine manufacturing technology apprenticeship programs. Similarly, at Chemeketa Community College in Salem and at Clackamas Community College in Oregon City, you could get an associate's degree in welding technology. Now, Oregon State University has excellent engineering programs, and these are great if you're thinking of going the manufacturing or mechanical engineering route. And similarly, they have a construction engineering management program for those of you who are interested in being a leader in construction projects. Now, I didn't even start talking about all of the apprenticeships available in Oregon. If you want to take a look at the dozens of apprenticeship programs available in the state, you can get a full list of programs where you go to start them, entry requirements, job outlooks, and so much more through the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industry, or BOLI for short. Uh, you can just Google Oregon BOLI and learn everything you need to know about all things apprenticeships in Oregon. It is a fantastic site with so much information. Definitely check it out if you're thinking about an apprenticeship. But as with all CCPs, your manufacturing and design technology career can start right here at Blanco High School. Mr. Stupfell is our amazing welding teacher and he came to Glencoe after working in the field for a long time as a real live machine welder. He is really cool, really fun, and has a lot of insight to share about the manufacturing and design technology industry. Another fun fact about Mr. Stupfell, he went to Glencoe High School and he learned all sorts of stuff right here like you will. So hit him up if you want to learn more 
And of course, you know that you can hit me up right here at EMS. And I can't wait to talk to you about this and all of the other Glencoe CCPs. Until then, this is Wagner out.